You know, we have uh, we've been telling you uh, this week about how the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence came out with their findings. They said that uh, what happened in Benghazi was preventable. They said that Al Qaeda affiliates were involved, and in the uh, in the back part of it, it said that Hillary Clinton was uh, ultimately responsible for security. What's interesting now is we're hearing about testimony that uh, Joint Chiefs Chair Martin Dempsey gave in October, and what he revealed was, you know, we all want to get the bad guys who did that. We want to get them. But he revealed that the Pentagon's hands are tied because we can only go after Al Qaeda or Al Qaeda affiliates. Now, I know we've been saying it's Al Qaeda, and, and the Senate said this week it's Al Qaeda affiliates. Right. Yes. But according to the administration, it wasn't core Al Qaeda, so, so we right. couldn't they, go after him. They got too many lawyers on the staff. Yeah, I mean, it, and it's awfully wordy, and things are designed to obviously protect, but here it. It's so disheartening to know that their hands are literally tied the, under the authorization for use of military force. Um, it allows U.S. attacks anywhere in the world only on al-Qaeda and associated forces, but they, are, they don't fall under the AUMF authorization Why? by I the mean, Congress right now. They, they just it don't. It doesn't make any sense when you now know, it, it, within minutes of the attack, even beforehand, we knew that the associated, the associated I mean, that's that's the loose general term. And so, Wasn't that know, enough? Martin Dempsey right? has been criti criticized. He was criticized in the Senate report for not having any assets in the right. area. You wonder if that's some sort of excuse, though, for not having any assets in the area because we weren't able to classify these groups that were associated with al-Qaeda. They were certainly associated right. with al-Qaeda. We know from the Senate report that they were associated. Right. Americans dead, and it says that the U.S. could seek to capture the Benghazi attackers under the existing agreement, but it would need to rely on forces in Libya or yeah. any other countries where the attackers are hiding in to order to do so. I it's, it's infuriating, and literally feeling handcuffed when we can't protect our own is, is an awful, awful sentiment. Yeah, we would have to ask Libya for permission Remember, they killed Americans, but we'd have to ask Libya permission. So this past week, uh, the Department of State has classified two of the organizations involved in the attack as terror outfits, and they are al-Qaeda affiliates. What's interesting is, you know, some of the things we've heard is uh, State Department employee Greg Hicks and others had asked for help. Yes. We need more security. The ambassador asked for more security as well, but the Department of State turned it down repeatedly. And, uh, you know, you've probably heard on TV some people say, well, uh, uh, the guy who ran AFRICOM, Carter Ham, offered Chris Stevens more protection, and he said no. Well, uh, Stevens' bosses had said no, so he had to say no. But it wouldn't have made any difference anyway, because the Department of Defense was calling the shots, and, in fact, Leon Panetta took more security away the month before the attack. Anyway, I bring up Chris Stevens because Lindsey Graham took to the floor yesterday and talked about how there are some on the political left who are blaming Chris Stevens, our ambassador, who died. Listen to this. Here we are, years later, the families have no clue as to what happened to their loved ones and quit blaming the dead guy. This su suggestion that Chris Stevens had fault for his own death. Chris Stevens was in Benghazi because that's where he was supposed to be doing what America wanted him to do, try to hold Libya together. So there's not going to be any blaming the dead guy. Don't blame yeah. the dead guy. And meanwhile, still no one has been fired for this debacle. Uh, going out on putting out those talking points the next the next day on the Sunday talk shows where Susan Rice went and said that it was because of a uh, because of a spontaneous. But what does YouTube it matter? Video. And then of course what Hillary difference Clinton. Doesn't make? What does it matter? Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, of course, no one has been fired yet from the administration uh, for any of this, and um, it's pretty remarkable. Yesterday, Ed Henry asked uh, Press Secretary Jay Carney about this very issue, and here was uh, the press secretary's response. Senator Graham, a Republican, obviously was on the floor today, and he compared the Benghazi situation to Chris Christie's uh, situation and said, look, uh, he owned up to it, he fired people. Uh, and he specifically said, why hasn't one person uh, at the White House, the State Department, been fired over it? How do you answer that? All I can tell you is, again, this has been uh, exhaustively investigated by both Congress and the ARB uh, and others. Uh, very uh, s sort of stark assessments have been made, recommendations have been put forward, including on personnel, and the State Department adopted those.
You know, he just quoted the ARB, the Accountability Review Board. As investigations go, it was pretty, many in Washington regarded it as a joke. I mean, there were no note takers. They didn't record anything. They didn't talk to Hillary. They didn't get there for 18 days. Well, that was the FBI. The, the, originally, yeah, the FBI wasn't there for 18 days. The investigation's uh, taken far too long. There's still no answers, no accountability. Even from an accountability review board, they can't find accountability. Seems to be systemic at this point, according to many. Um, well, why isn't Patrick Kennedy, I mean, you know, he was listed right underneath Hillary Clinton in this report that came mm -hmm. out as the reason for the lack of security and organization at the State sure. Department. So Hillary Clinton sort of dodged a bullet here from, from any of the, uh, the members of Congress in this Senate report. Maybe she was mentioned one time. one time. He's mentioned repeatedly throughout the report. He still has a job. Yep. And, and you know, I know we've been talking about Benghazi since it happened sure. here on this show and on Fat Fox, and you hear it on the radio, and you hear it, uh, see it on, online with the bloggers and whatnot. But you don't really see much in the mainstream media. You have to ask yourself, if a Republican presidency was involved and there were a Republican uh, sitting in the, the chair at the time, don't you think when four Americans are killed in an attack on our consul, the first in 30 years, that's a big story. Why isn't anybody following it? You gotta wonder. For that accountability. It's fact. politics and it's a double standard. Yeah, let us know what you think about this story and more uh, friends at foxnews.com. The show continues this morning. Oh, that's right. Uh, 10 minutes